Well, it's hard to believe that it has been another year in Alaska. This is our fourth year here and our third year doing a calendar. Our 2023 Alaska calendar is ready for purchase. She's gorgeous. We've got the big copy and this calendar comes in two different sizes. We're gonna put the link in our description and you can also visit our website if you're interested in purchasing it. If you purchased one in the past, thank you very much. It is filled with Alaskan images. Eric and I love making the calendar. We love going on adventures and just getting to see Alaska. The printing company we've been using is awesome. So we are using them again and they can ship out worldwide. They ship to lots of different locations. We hope you enjoy the calendar if you are interested in purchasing one and we're moving on to today's video. We're going hunting today, hunting for blueberries. We got the player loaded up. We got the boys and all our gear. It's about an hour ride to our secret spot. We'll see you guys up there. We made it to our destination and we already found blueberries, which is awesome. That's what we came for. It is beautiful out here. Unfortunately, it is going to be raining. It's been raining for about two months, as you may know. So the plant life though, doesn't seem to mind it. It actually seems to be a benefit to these plants out here because it is wildly colorful. It's probably the most colorful fall that Eric and I have personally seen. When you come up to the mountains here, it's so fantastic. We're actually in what is called a alpine tundra. So we are just above the tree line where trees don't really grow because there is frost in the ground year round. So there's lots of shrubs, lots of berries, mosses, things like that. It's perfect for berry picking. There are so many berries here, but the main berry that we're after today is blueberries. Hey, that's my container. Put up our little tarp tent, keep things dry. It is gonna start raining, I'm pretty sure. It's looking pretty gloom out here, but we're gonna be out here for a long time picking berries. All right, there you go, girl. We haven't even made it to like the actual hill where we pick, we're just on the little trail up. Look how big these blueberries are this year. I mean, that's massive. There is smaller ones like that, but I mean, that is just so cool. It's the size of a human thumbnail. That is, let's try them though. Look good. Yeah, wild blueberries, it's just insane. Did you make sure to clock in this morning? Yeah. Let me see if I can get some vacation. It'll be a hard no until blueberry season's over. A hard no. You know you can pick them off the plant yourself. Right there. Do you see that? Do you see what that is? That's a blueberry. Yum. All right, these are blues and blacks in here. That thing works good. That's how you get so much more than me. It does. It does work good, but you can only do it when the at a certain time. If you come before the berries are ripe, this thing sucks. Well, that's you just said it though. Who should be picking before the berries are ripe? These are 
loaded. We are in a huge patch right now. I mean, it's like the whole hillside, so it's not just a patch. Alaska is known for wild blueberries. They are fantastic. They are very flavorful, very potent stuff. They dye your teeth blue, just so you know that. They, they do that to ours. We have really acidic soils here, so they a lot of berries do really well. And in fact, I don't know all the differences between the blueberries. There's huckleberries. I just discovered there's bill, bill, billberries here as well. So that's another type of berry that looks similar to this one. And the plants look pretty close to each other. I believe we're harvesting blueberries right now, but I know that there are also huckleberries out here too. Either way, they're all good. They're all blue and they're all delicious. Did I mention I like to harvest blueberries? That's not a trailing raspberry. I think maybe he's trying to put some foliage to So I think I stumbled upon a different variety right here because these are way more tangy, way more tart. I don't know if those are huckleberry, but they just taste, to me, the, these ones are a little more, more up my alley. I really like those. These ones are delicious up here. You gotta come pick these, hon. I know they taste really good. They taste great. That's how much I collected. Thank you. Check out our bucket. Okay. That's, I'm gonna say this is two gallons. It's a two gallon bucket and it's just about full. That's gotta be two gallons. It's probably the best blueberry picking we've ever done. These hills are just loaded with huge blueberries. Every time we go blueberry picking, I do bring my little scoop, and every single time we go, I don't use it. Except for this time. This time, I don't know, the conditions are just like perfect for using this thing. A lot of the plants have already dropped their leaves, and if they haven't dropped their leaves, they're not really on there. So this thing just is scooping through and just nailing the blueberries. You can see in this bucket, we're getting, we're getting leaves in there, but it's, it's not bad. This is, we haven't been out here very long. It's taken me like maybe like four minutes to fill up one of these whole things. So this is amazing. Keep on picking. We're gonna make some coffee. Coffee time. That's cool. Do you want to hold it at all? Yeah. See what it feels like? Oh my gosh. starting to rain. All right, Tim Hortons coffee and a freeze-dried meal. A little something to warm us up out here. It's getting chilly and I'm pretty wet. Storming now. We've got to go back out there and get a few more gallons before we can head home. Thank you. 
Well, I have Eric to thank for these because my method of hand picking is much slower. Probably wouldn't have anywhere near that amount. I don't know if you gathered, but I love picking blueberries. It's my favorite Alaskan pastime. It's also Bo's favorite because he knows how to harvest them. And it's Bandit's favorite because he is running around chasing the sound that those Arctic ground squirrels make. And there's also pikas and marmots out here too. So little critters of the mountains, I guess. Look at this one. I think we're gonna wrap things up after this last little patch we're on. We're getting ready to take down our little tent and head home. Thought I'd share some pretty cool information with you guys. This is a GPS tracking collar that we use usually on Bandit. Bo has one too. And uh, we use this in case Bandit goes too far away. We'll do a tone. So it's like an audible beep and he'll come back to us and it'll tell us how far he ran just running around here on the trail end. And Bandit did 5.42 miles today. So pretty dang impressive for a 13 year old dog. Awesome. So we're gonna get this thing down. We're gonna head home. It's starting to get wet out here. Back out harvesting again this morning. We got two buckets. I'm going for high bush cranberries. We just started out here, so I only have about a cup. And then Ariel's going for these little rose hips. So we got a nice cool day, cool fall day. Perfect for harvesting. Those ones are for you. Oh my gosh, <coughs> that is good. That is not a high bush cranberry. This is a red currant. They're absolutely delicious. I'm just gonna mix these in with my high bush cranberries for our recipe we're making, but those are awesome. Beautiful, those are like in their prime. It's a little late for these rose hips. Ideally, we would have wanted to get these probably like two, three weeks ago. I like to wait a little bit later because they do get sweeter as time goes on. Once you actually have like a light frost, they will get sweet and they taste delicious. We don't actually eat them raw this year. I may try drying them and doing some for tea, something like that. Usually we process them. I really like the flavor. For some reason it reminds me of a tomato mixed with like another fruit or something like that. This one looks pretty good to me. It's a nice like, I don't know if I wanna say magenta color. So it's not the orange color that they are when they first start out. They start out orange and they go red and they get a little bit darker. Some people don't like to harvest them when they get mushy. I don't really mind because we're gonna be processing them, but you just wanna stay away from them if they're like really wrinkly or if they're starting to break down in mold or something like that. We've got a nice array of them here and hopefully we can find some more. I don't need too many for the recipe that we're gonna be doing. Well, we found some more stuff. We found Labrador leaves and we haven't picked this in a while. I know we picked this a few years back and it was a little bit strong in my taste. For tea, you have to be careful with how long you wanna steep it. But I do wanna try it like marinating meats. I think it could be comparable to, maybe not comparable to a bay leaf, but something like that, like a dried leaf if you're doing meats or maybe even fish. So we're taking some of that home and we found an unidentified fungi. I think it's turkey tail. It smells fantastic. It's a little bit old and there is another lookalike. I just have to double check what the lookalike looks like because I'm not sure if this one is actually turkey tail or not. We're gonna head off to our next spot and see if we can find any more berries. <laughs> Definitely not the best year for high bush cranberries. We usually find a lot more and they're bigger, but I think this is gonna be enough for us. These plants aren't actually cranberries, just called high bush cranberries. We also have low bush cranberries and they're super tart. These, these ones, the high bush are super tart, very easily identifiable. The leaf is something I personally find nothing else looks like it except for a current leaf and those are also edible. We have one more thing to forage back at our house. So that's where we're headed.
Okay, well I've been putting this mushroom harvesting off, waiting for the time to be right. And it is right. Look at these beautiful mushrooms right here. These mushrooms don't get like absolutely huge, so that's a that's a pretty good size. These are yellow foot chanterelles, or we also call them winter chanterelles. Totally delicious. We've mentioned in our videos this summer, we have been getting just a crazy amount of rain and a lot of plants have just been doing great. Mushrooms are one of them. We're gonna have some awesome mushroom harvesting today. Oh yeah, look at this one. You don't usually get that big. No. I even found one over there that's like twice that big. This is the best it has ever been. Look at this. Leaves in there. Look at those. I already harvested some of Look at that cluster. See right here? Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. They're like getting clusters this year. Well, like they usually. All of these are doing really well. Look at little fun. See, I use my knife out here because I can see I cut them. Oh, did you leave your knife out here? Um. No, I don't think so. It's a neck knife. There it is. Oh, look at this one. Nice big dark one. It is an awesome year for these mushrooms. That rain is really helping them for sure. They have a short window of opportunity here. You have to get to them before you have frost or you start to have a hard frost. We have yet to have that. I think it's because of the rain. So I'm expecting it in probably the next two weeks or so. So we're gonna try and get a lot of these harvested before then. This mushroom, we did not know how to identify it before we came here. I hadn't seen it before. And there was one thing in particular that kind of tripped me up and it's that these ones are hollow or they have a hollow stem. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna cut into it. But that was confusing to me. That's not typical of other chanterelles. They can actually vary quite a bit from each mushroom to the next. So sometimes they have like a round circular cap and sometimes they have like a wavy one like this. They do have ridges, forked ridges on the back. So that's another good identification factor and their stem. It's always that golden color. It's a little deceiving because to me, I would say this is orange, not quite yellow, but all of those factors combined, we know that these are the yellow foot chanterelles. I also know because of where they're growing. So they grow really well in these bog areas near the base of trees or in the, the moss itself. But with any mushroom, obviously you gotta be very careful before you make the choice to eat it. So we did a little bit of consulting with some professionals before before we actually ate this one, I wanted to make sure that it was, in fact, an edible mushroom. So this one's hollow, right there on the inside. The stem is really good. The stem's one of Eric's favorite parts. That's why he's pulling it out, and the top is pretty meaty. They dry excellent, and they're awesome to eat all throughout the winter. Do you remember how I told you the bogs are uh, trees that have broken down like over, maybe it's even thousands of years? I don't know hundreds of years but that's why they're growing in the bog is because of the the old wood wow the mycelium mycelium proud moment right here this is a two gallon bucket overflowing that's the biggest one i've picked so far i mean look at the thing it's like an earring it's gorgeous yeah awesome flavor with these things. This is probably the first year we're actually going to have to use the five gallon bucket. We've probably only been picking for maybe like 25 minutes. This is absolutely insane. It's a great time out here. Look at those. Let's transfer them. That's like three gallons. Another fantastic foraging day in the books. I think we're both kind of tired. I think we're gonna call it quits, head inside, and tomorrow we have some plans for cleaning up and 
making things out of what we harvested. Well, that's it. About five gallons worth of mushrooms, not bad. Heavy old sack. We are getting started this morning on cranberry juice. We have never made it before and we are interested in trying it. So I've got probably about four to five cups of high bush cranberries in this pot and then maybe like six cups of water. We're just gonna bring it to like a light simmer and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Eric and I finished processing all our blueberries yesterday, cleaning them and cleaning the mushrooms. It took about three hours. We have all the mushrooms drying and I have our blueberries in the freezer. I set just a little bit aside for something that we're making today. We're gonna let our berries cool before we blend them and I am starting on some jam bars. Our neighbor was nice enough to share her recipe. Unfortunately, I am heavily modifying it because I do not have all of those ingredients. So I'm gonna get started with some sugar. I've got about a cup of sugar here and we're gonna add probably half a cup of butter, and then I'm also gonna add some coconut oil and an egg, and we're gonna get this mixed up first. I added probably about three scoopfuls of coconut oil, and I've got that mixed together. There's still some chunks of butter, but that's okay. I'm gonna be adding that to flour, and I have three and a half cups in this bowl of just all-purpose flour. And into this mix goes some vanilla, we're gonna put maybe a half teaspoon of baking powder and then just a little bit of salt too. This is a perfect consistency. It's just barely coming together. So I've got a 13 by nine dish or a rectangle of some sort and I'm gonna be pressing about half of this dough, maybe a little bit more into the bottom of that dish and we're gonna get it cooked in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. Our high bush cranberry mixture is still very hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and mix it. And I'm using our immersion blender. You could definitely just strain these and not do this step, but I don't mind if there's pulp in there and I'm trying to extract the most that I can from the berries. So I've got a strainer and some cheesecloth. These have really large seeds in them. You can definitely eat them. They're not a problem, but they're pretty big. So we're gonna strain that out for the juice. This is my special way of straining juices and such. This is what we do for our keeper cheese. We're just gonna let this sit here. We've got enough weight here. And I guess again, five minutes or so, we should have that juice completed. Looks good. Okay, it wouldn't be a normal day in the kitchen if we weren't multitasking. This has been in for how long I wanna let it cook. Normally you use jam for this recipe, but we're gonna be using the fresh berries that we have. And then I have some orange zest I'm gonna to add to that. And then I'm also going to add some maple syrup. That sounds delicious. And then I'm just gonna layer that right on top of that dough. Okay, we're ready for the rest of the dough. We're gonna crumble it up and put it on top and get it back in the oven. I added about a quarter cup of oats to it, so it's gonna have a little more oomph for this recipe. There we go, that looks awesome. And I'm gonna turn our oven down just a little bit, probably closer to 300. Ours runs pretty hot. I don't want those to cook too fast. We add some honey and orange juice to the high bush cranberry juice, which is very tart. So I think that that's gonna be a nice, sweet and acidic balance. And then we're gonna put this outside for a little bit because I want to drink it chilled, not hot. Time to start our rose hips. We have about two cups 
and these guys are a little bit squishy because we harvest them a little bit late in the season. You can remove the seeds. This is the fruit of the rose, so it has seeds in it. I personally never do that because we always strain them and I like to get the most when I'm processing them. They say to some people that those seeds can be irritating if you're eating them raw. We're not eating them raw, so that shouldn't be a problem. Rose hips are a powerhouse. They have a lot of nutritional and medicinal benefits. We're cooking them, processing them, so they're gonna lose a little bit of that, but they're still going to be delicious. We're gonna get them in this pot, add some water, and we're gonna be making barbecue sauce with these today. The rose hips cook for about 30 minutes. We're gonna be running them through our tomato strainer. It's very hot, so I've gotta be careful. Oh, let's make sure she's plugged in first. Pour that down. Okay, this may seem kind of silly, but you do get the most from these when you do it this way. If you try to strain them manually, I just I feel like you just don't get that much out of them. So I'm not gonna worry about some of those seeds because we're gonna be blending this barbecue sauce all the way anyways. We're gonna get this back to our pot and then we're gonna add a whole bunch of other good ingredients. This is the time to let your creativity shine. We have lots of things in there and we are adding a whole bunch of more stuff. We're adding Dried herbs, this is a little assortment of, actually it's a big assortment of a lot of herbs we have, and a spice mixture that Eric made up, so that's a secret to me. And we're gonna add a few of these peppers. Once it's cooked down for a little while, I'm gonna immersion blend it and I'm gonna add our sweetness to it. I almost forgot I wanted to add a little bit of Cuban oregano too. The vegetables are soft and ready to blend. I almost forgot to add vinegar to this recipe. So we're adding apple cider vinegar, probably about a cup. Okay, and then we're gonna be careful again and immersion blend this. We're going to add maple syrup and honey to this because I do not have brown sugar and I do not have molasses on hand. I don't know what happened but we just don't have it, so that's not good, but we've got to sweeten this up somehow. We're gonna do a taste test and evaporate some of that liquid and get it to the consistency and the flavor that we like before we can it. There you go, our barbecue sauce is finished. We water bathed it for 15 minutes and it had some really good earthy smoky flavors too. We ended up adding just some of our own mustard to kind of finish it off. In the meantime, our jam bar has chilled and is ready to be tasted. <laughs> These bars look awesome. They cooked for about 40 minutes and we added just a tiny bit of butter on top and some powdered sugar. On a separate note, I guess it's slightly related. The other day when I was out foraging, I found what I thought was turkey tail, although it didn't quite look like turkey tail because of the bottom side didn't have the pores. And I looked it up in the car on the way home and it actually is called violet toothed polypore. So similar to turkey tail. In fact, when I was harvesting it, I saw that there was like this bright, purple band, which I thought was a little unusual. My point being with that is that you learn something new every day. Eric and I have learned 
about foraging through years. We've learned by books, we've learned online. A lot of people share really great stuff online if you're willing to wade through it, so to speak. But nothing, in my opinion, compares to actually getting out into the field and looking for the specimens and actually bringing them back home and doing some more research. So that is all we have done. That's just over the years, we've just constantly learned that way. And every year we're learning more and more, including that mushroom that I just found the other day. I'm gonna have my cameraman jump in here and we're going to enjoy this bar, these bars and the juice. Did you shake it up? Yeah. Look at the color on that. It looks like- Oh my gosh. It looks- uh, It's like a Kool-Aid or a Hawaiian punch. I was punch. punch. Let me try this. Yeah, it looks like punch. Any good? Oh my gosh. It tastes like a- Tropical? Tart? It's very unique. Almost like lemonade. That's really good. Wow. Yeah, it's delicious. It's just really, really light and refreshing. Mm. It's oh my good. gosh. Yeah, those are good. I like the oats. Holy cow. Eric approved. That's the bomb. Stay in my teeth. Look at that. That's crazy. It's beautiful. I'm probably gonna drink this all night.